Welcome to episode 138 of the Sports Geek Podcast. On this week's episode, I chat with Zach Monnet about pro cycling and diabetes. Welcome to the Sports Geek Podcast, the podcast built for sports digital and sports business professionals. And now, here's your host, who has hit the game-winning shot exactly three times, Sean Callanan. Thanks, DJ Joel. You are listening to the Sports Geek Podcast on your favorite podcast platform. And you've left a review, right? You have. I've asked enough. Thank you to those who have. This is over 106 iTunes reviews worldwide. Um, it's the only one where I can actually aggregate all the reviews. Every other platform, if you've left a review somewhere else, uh, thank you very much. But I haven't got any tool to go and pull those reviews from everywhere. So 106 is my number at the minute. If you haven't left a review and you're not one of the 106, please go do that now. Sportsgeekhq.com slash iTunes. That will take you to the, to the Apple Store and you can leave a review. Much appreciated. My name is Sean Callanan uh, and you are listening to the Sports Geek Podcast. Uh, you can find me on most social platforms as at Sean Callanan. And if you, if you so wish, you can send me an email and give me some feedback. And I love listener feedback. Uh, Sean at sportsgeekhq.com will find me. Uh, this week's guest is uh, Zach Monnet from Team Novo Nordisk. And I love chatting with, and this is not meant to be a, a, a denigrate or put down, off Broadway guests because Zach is, uh, is managing digital for a, for a massive fan base. But uh, when I say off-Broadway, I'm talking about people that are outside the professional team, sports professional team space. So I'm lucky enough to talk to a lot of, a lot of you um, that are listening and, and uh, a lot of you that are working in the professional team space and running digital and uh, collaborating uh, with commercial and, and getting results from a, from a sports team point of view. Um, but in this case, and this is why I sort of mentioned Zach as off Broadway, he's he's working with a pro cycling team, um, which is not you know in mainstream media, and uh, and so you get a feel for what it's like to run very similar function, uh, produce content, tell the message, storytelling, uh, creating heroes of athletes, a lot of the similar things, but with a different uh, different environment, different support. Um, uh, than, than a professional team environment. So here is my chat with Zach Monette from Team Novo Nordisk. Very happy to welcome Zach Monette, Senior Digital Media Director from Team Novo Nordisk. Welcome to the podcast, Zach. Hi, Sean. Thanks for having me. I'm a huge fan and I'm glad to be here. Well, it's, it's always great to, one, have people who are, uh, are listeners uh, of the podcast on the podcast and also have people that I've met. Uh, we met at a C conference um, and been chatting about what you do. Tell us a little bit about Team Novo Nordisk for people that don't know and have, probably haven't heard about it before. So we're a professional cycling team, um, but we're the world's first all-diabetes pro cycling team, which means that all of our riders are living with type 1 diabetes. And that's the first team of its kind. It's the first team where all of the riders are, are living with the same condition. And so uh, a lot of people, when they're diagnosed with diabetes, they're told that they're not, they can't pursue their dreams and they can't do sports. And our team is going out there showing that that's not the case. We're showing what, what's possible. Um, uh, for example, like half of our riders on our pro team were told they couldn't ride their bike. One of our riders was told he could only ride his bike a mile. Um, which is obviously not true because he's riding 200 kilometer races all year long. Yep. And so, uh, so our team is out there to inspire, educate and empower everybody affected by diabetes. So, so you've got the professional uh, cycling team. You've also got some triathletes. There's a few sports in there, but everybody on the team, uh, has diabetes. Um, I've, I've looked up the stats, 387 million people across the world, uh, have diabetes and, and your team is there to, to inspire them to say, yes, you can exercise. It is a it is a method and a really effective method to treat diabetes, um, and really inspire that everyone who is is both either has it or is affected by it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you mentioned our, our triathlon and uh, elite elite teams. So our our team is spearheaded by the the pro team, and then all of the other teams are kind of going in to support 
that pro team because our ultimate goal is to put riders with diabetes into the Tour de France by the year 2021, um, which is the 100th anniversary of the discovery of insulin. Okay. And we hope by doing that, that we'll, we'll change uh, the face of diabetes because I think it's like 3.5 billion people will watch the Tour de France over the three week span. Um, so for a cycling team, that's the ultimate platform and that's where we're going to have the biggest impact. And so our, our whole organization is kind of geared toward making that happen. So, so give people who might not, you know, people would understand when you say Tour de France, um, take us, take us, a, uh, give us a bit of background on the pro cycling scene. How does a team get into the Tour de France? What, what do you have to do from a qualification point of view? How, how, how are you going to go about doing that by, uh, by the goals that you've set at the minute? So the Tour de France is kind of like the Super Bowl of cycling. Um, and the top 24 teams ish, top 24 ish teams get, uh, invited to the, the Tour de France. So our team, we're currently a pro continental team. There's continental pro continental, and then there's, um, pro tour. And yeah. our team is a pro continental team, which means we're kind of like in the, the, um, the minor leagues. Yep. But Cycling is different because the minor league and major league teams compete together and against each other um, several times throughout the year. And so we're trying to create that squad of riders with diabetes that can compete on a world tour stage and hopefully get invited to the Tour de France by uh, by 2021. So, um, so it's a, it's similar to a, if we if we take a tennis analogy, if you if your team gets the rankings enough, uh, you can get a wild card uh, or a seed into the Tour de France. But you have to put, put these results on on the lower level and on 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 different tours around the world. That's exactly right. And so the results obviously are the main driver, but the the story of the team and also the awareness of the team can also play a factor in getting an invitation. So the fact that we have 5 million Facebook followers could be an asset in achieving that goal, but ultimately it will be the, the results that are going to get us there. Yeah. So you mentioned, you mentioned that and congratulations on passing, you know, 5 million Facebook fans. You're very, your I guess your uh, your goal and and uh, objective is very different to a lot of my guests. A lot of the guests we talk about, you know, cheeks on the seats and and TV ratings and selling selling merchandise, really com- really strong commercial outcomes. Whereas you're almost in the not there's no almost about it. You're in the cause marketing space where you're where you're pushing pushing the message of you know uh, healthy exercise, how you can treat diabetes. How do you how do you get that mix right of here's the message to inspire, but also taking some of the best practices from pro teams and and different tours of that sports marketing and and journalism. How do you get that mix right? Well, as you mentioned, a lot of sports teams, their ultimate goal is the cheeks and the seats. And ours is to um, provide maximum value to our sponsor. And our, our title sponsor is Novo Nordisk, who is a, a big pharmaceutical company based out of Denmark. And, and we provide um, awareness and we provide um, uh, inspiration to all of the millions of people that, that follow us. And that's how we provide value to our sponsor. So the more the more we can quantify the lives that we've improved, the more we're, we're showing value to our sponsor. And so in order to do that, we've tried to take um, inspiration from how other sports teams um, kind of align their, their strategies to put the cheeks in the seats yep. and see if we can apply that to how we um, uh, deliver inspiration to people and how we um, – uh, inspire and uh, hopefully change lives. And the thing is, you're really pushing. I mean, uh, because it's a you're, it's a global play. It's you know you're you're pushing your message out to the to the world. You are pushing lo- like a lot of the, uh, the the big EPL teams and things like that that are pushing engagement in all these in all these markets. So because you're not trying to drive someone 
you know, uh, to, a, to a stadium 24 times a year or 82 times a year or 12 times a year, you're actually trying to just build and grow that audience, inspire people, engage them, have those metrics to go back to your sponsor and say, this is what we've done, but that's your, you're going with that fan engagement and uh, ins- inspiration piece first rather than, you know, the, the, normally the first cab off the rank is uh, we need to still make sure we're getting these commercial results. So your, your, your go-to move is always to inspire, engage, because a lot of your fans are probably, uh, you know, uh, diabetics first and athletes second or fans second or third. Would that be the case? Yes, in a lot of cases. And so as a, as a cycling team, we change our, our stadium with every, every race, like sometimes we'll race in the mountains. Sometimes we'll race in the desert. We just finished tour of Dubai. Um, sometimes we'll race in Brazil. Sometimes we'll race in France. And so, um, it, it's the experience is different for every location. And most of our digital audience will never see our team race in person. So what we try to do is we try to make that experience as as engaging on digital as we can for those people who will never see our team race. So covering a global uh, global tour, um, logistics must be a, a nightmare. How do you, as a, a from a digital team point of view, uh, what are the resources in place? Do you have to travel with the team? How, do, how does it work from, you know, when you're in, you know, one, one week you're in Dubai and then another week you're in Brazil? Uh, are you racking up the frequent flyer miles? How, how, does, how does that work uh, from a digital team point of view? Well, that's been a challenge for us. We're, we're kind of a small operation. And so, uh, we've really, really tried to, uh, make that experience as, as good as possible, um, at the different races. We, uh, for the first couple of years, it was just me. And so it was kind of feast or famine. If I was at a race, I would be able to, uh, uh, Cover it. live and I'd be yep. able to, yeah, uh, capture video and things like that. Um, this year we've added two full-time press officers and they're going to travel to every race and they're going to be able to provide, um, more content and, uh, we'll be able to try out things like live video and Snapchat, which we've not been able to do because I'm not able to go to a lot of the races. And as you know, you have to be there, you know, and so, uh, we're really looking forward to take advantage of, uh, of some of those new things. And so does that give you a little bit more, like you said, that feast of famine mode of, and you know, a lot of the pro teams have had that where, you know, the social coverage at home game is really good, but the, but the social and digital producers aren't going into a way to game. So it's a different, it's the consistency is not there. Now that you've got some press officers, at least capturing some material, taking a few more photos, capturing more video. Are you seeing a little bit more consistency in what you're delivering in each tour where it's not just dependent on whether you're there out on the, uh, out on the course. Definitely. We've had a, it's been a challenge for us to capture enough video to stay competitive with a lot of the teams that are, that have, you know, full-time traveling press officers. And, uh, we haven't been able to really dive into things like Snapchat or even be, um, consistent on YouTube. Like we yeah. have 5 million Facebook followers, but we only have about a thousand YouTube subscribers. So there's a real imbalance there and I'm looking forward to, uh, having more content that's going to be able allow us to, uh, to balance out those other channels. And the thing is you have to, you have to do all the lifting as a, as a team. There is no, um, you know, if you look at the MLB and the fact that, uh, major league baseball has, is, is covering the game and, and providing a lot of resources across all the teams. The NBA does the same. Um, there is no, overall organizing body that's that's making sure your message is getting amplified it's it's all based on your team for in a pro cycling sense isn't it yeah that's right and and there's a lot of inconsistency in how uh teams approach digital media some teams really dive in and and try to take advantage of it and some teams don't seem to be as interested in it our team with our message it's kind of an essential uh, piece of what we do and so we've kind of dived in, um, head first. So you, you've mentioned it before with, with Facebook being the five million and it seems to be, you know, that the hub of where a lot of your fan engagement is coming from. How, how do you, as a, you know, as an American developed team, but you've got this global mission, you don't have this hometown support again, the, to, to drive people into the crowd. What, what are you finding over the past, you know, 18 months, two years, what are you finding that the, the, the content 
that is best resonating with your fans? It's the stories of our, our athletes. Like I said earlier, about half of them were told that they couldn't compete as pro cyclists living with diabetes. Yep. And they're out there um, proving that that's not true. And so the more we can showcase that, the more um, our fans respond and the more our fans kind of see themselves um, and, and see like, you know, why can't I do that? If these guys can do it, why can't I? Um, so the more we can kind of showcase the personality of our team and, and the stories of our athletes, uh, the more our fans respond. I mean, and that is, you know, straight out of the sports marketing playbook of making heroes out of your athletes and amplifying their message. And the fact that you've got this really strong story. And as you said earlier, it's that story and the amplification of that story that's going to be really compelling when I'm assuming there's some sort of committee at the Tour de France, when they're looking at all the teams and they're saying, why should we bring these, uh, why should we give Team Novo Nordisk a, a wild card? It's, it should be, well, here's, here's the story. How much are your athletes getting more and more involved in the, in the digital space? Are, they, are you seeing them using, you know, we're seeing more athletes using Instagram a lot or, or they might be starting to use Snapchat or are they, are they tweeting backwards and forwards with, uh, with fans? What, what kind of platforms are your athletes gravitating to or are, they, or are they, I'm on the bike, I'm concentrating? Do you get a mix out of your uh, 18 riders and your, and your wider athlete group? A lot of the guys are really into it. And so those guys who seem to have a passion for social media, I, uh, I kind of try to groom them and give them some, some pointers of ways to engage with fans and to, uh, um, help build a personal brand and also leverage the team. Some of the other guys who aren't as into it, I try to encourage them because they are the, they are the story. And obviously the more, the more we can leverage them, the more success we'll have at, at, uh, at spreading our message. Um, the younger riders, as they come up through the ranks, we found that they are kind of already groomed. Like they're kind of seeing, uh, obviously, you know, digital is their world. Yep. But, um, one of our, our first year riders this year, he already has like a Facebook page with 5,000 likes and, um, he has his own like press officer and all this stuff. So, we have these little these little digital um, experts coming up through the ranks, so it's uh, it's interesting to watch. And it's and it's going to be another it's it's going to be a challenge, but it's also a really good opportunity because, as you said, you know, like many sports organisations, stretch for resources and stretch for channels. You can only have so many channels that you're publishing content on, but if you can then have really engaged fan uh, sorry athletes that are using these channels. It sort of makes your job a little bit easier to spread the spread the message if you if they're amplifying their their story um, uh, and amplifying your content. It's just another channel that uh, pushes your content out. Absolutely, and we have an unspoken agreement that I could just take their pictures and post them on the team's page. But I I tag them and I you know I make it worth their while. But it, they are a great source of content, and they're on the ground and they 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 know how to tell the story. So. Uh, so yeah, they're they're the best source of content. So you talked a little bit about you know one of your KPIs and in, in in what you need to do for the sponsor uh, with uh, Team Novo Nordisk. Before you were uh, b- before they were, came on board as a sponsor, you were the uh, uh, Type One. Uh, was it, was that the name of the team? Team Type One. Team Type One. Sorry. Um, so what was it like going from a non-sponsored team to a sponsored team with Team Novo Nordisk? So as as a um Team Type 1, we were also sponsored by a pharmaceutical company, but we didn't have their name in our name. When we became Team Nova Nordisk, they became our, our naming title sponsor. Okay. And, uh, and so that brought a lot of uh, regulation and a lot of challenges that other sports teams don't have to consider because when their name is in our, in our name, then our marketing materials are seen as their marketing materials and they are obligated to watch them, which means certain marketing aspects um, are under the jurisdiction of the FDA. And so that kind of is different for a sports team. And we had to figure out how to navigate that and how to honor that and to, to manage that risk, but also to compete as a sports team. Um, Pharma moves very slow and uh, sports is all about real time. And so we, 
we made a lot of progress over the past couple of years to, uh, um, to do our best to, to function as a sports team while, while honoring, um, the farming regulations and Nova has been a great sponsor. Um, at the end of 2017, they're going to take a step back and our team is looking for, uh, uh, new like-minded sponsors. And if anybody has any, uh, any interest or tips or wants to chat, uh, it would be great if they could send us an email at sponsorship at teamtype1.org. And we'll, uh, we'll make sure that, Zach, your details are in the show notes. If anyone wants to reach out and uh, connect with Zach, you can, uh, you can do so. Um, what I want to do is finish off with the uh, Sports Geek Closing Five. Uh, do you remember the first sports event you ever attended? Um, it was a, a Bulls Magic exhibition game in Tampa, Florida. And uh, I think it was the first season that the Orlando Magic um, when they debuted and my friend and I ran down to the tunnel as Michael Jordan was coming out and actually touched his head, like leaned over and touched his head. And later that night, my friend and I went back and we were shooting baskets in my driveway and I was like on fire. I couldn't miss. I had like the magic of MJ. Yep. But, uh, unfortunately it, it wore off. <laughs> it's very much, I think there's a current NBA ad where a young kid te- uh, puts their hand out and gets a high five from Stephen Curry and then doesn't wash their hand for, uh, for three days, I think. Uh, so it's very similar, uh, very similar to that. I'm sure Michael Jordan loved people touching his head as he ran off the uh, uh, ran off the court. Uh, I'm sure you weren't the only one. Um, do you have a favorite uh, food that you've consumed at a sports event? Um, I've been to the tour of Denmark a few times, and they have uh, Danish people love hot dogs, and they have really good hot dogs at the uh the tour of denmark the, the hot dogs that go inside the bun yep like the little tube uh, and those are terrific so i always look forward to getting those uh terrific uh and the first app that you open in the morning what's the what's your go-to app first thing i probably check out um apple news first and then after that i look at uh, pocket cast which i discovered thanks to listening to your podcast um uh, to see what uh what new podcast i get to listen to that day so that's, a, that's actually going to lead me into an extra bonus, bonus question. What are some of the podcasts you're listening to? That's one of the things I always ask people when I've, after I've, I've installed Pocket Cast on their phone, I then ask them what else they're listening to because I, I love finding out what other people are listening to because I'm always looking for new podcasts to put into my uh, listening role. Well, I love uh, Sports Geek, obviously. Uh, uh, I wasn't um, pandering to that, Zach, but I'll take <laughs> all the praise. What else? I, I'm looking at my list here. Um, I actually like listening to podcasts about Star Wars. It's very, it like passes the time easy. Um, social related, I like to listen to, um, I like the Social Pros podcast. I don't think they've posted in a while, but. Uh, Is that the Jay Bear one? That's right. Yep. Yeah. Um, scrolling down, I like Social Media Marketing with Michael Stelzner. Yep. Have you listened to, um, and it's not uh, directly uh, uh, related, have you listened to The Moment uh, with Brian Koppelman? So, I have not. Yeah, so, right now. yeah, so the uh, Brian Koppelman is the, uh, the, the guy behind, he wrote uh, the movie Rounders with Matt Damon and the current, uh, the current show he's doing at the minute is uh, Billions. Um, which I think is on HBO or Showtime. Again, I don't get these channels. I just watch the shows. Um, so he interviews uh, entertainers, entrepreneurs, authors, just around their backstory to try to find their moment when they got it, when they started figuring it out. Um, yeah, there's some really some really good ones where he's sort of sat down with the, you know, uh, with guys like Jay Maltucher, um and uh, Tony Robbins and. Uh, those kind of guys, um, yeah, really interesting. Um, I, I, if I want to uh, give my brain a bit of uh, nourishment, um, it's a really good podcast to listen to. Which that, that's my Perfect. that's my who you should follow. Uh, now I'm going to ask you who should your uh, who do you think Sports Geek podcast listeners should follow and why? Someone that, uh, that that's in your that's in your realm uh, that you want to give a shout out to. I think people should check out um, our photographer friend brian hodes on uh instagram he's at velo images v-e-l-o-i-m-a-g-e-s he takes a lot of great pictures from his travels around the world and 
yeah, he's just a great guy to follow on Instagram. Definitely. And we'll put Velo images. We'll put a couple of his posts in the show notes um, uh, for, from an Instagram. And uh, last but not least, what uh, social media platform is uh, is your MVP? I'm not accepting co-MVPs. Um, you must pick one. Uh, what's your uh, go-to MVP social media platform? Well, for our team, it, it's got to be Facebook. We have 5 million followers. Uh, and I hope uh, Instagram and maybe Snapchat can can rise to the challenge this year. Terrific, terrific! And again, congratulations on passing passing the five million uh, Facebook mark. That's a it's a massive massive milestone. Thank last, you. Last thing, uh, where can people where can people connect with you uh, on the internet? I'm at Zach Monet, Z-A-C-H-M-O-N-E-T-T-E um, on Twitter. And uh, you can find me at Zach Monet on LinkedIn. And, of course, uh, you can find you at, with that same handle in the Sports Biz Slack. Uh, so if you're in the Sports Business Slack community, please uh, send Zach a message and tell him that uh, you've heard, it, heard him on the uh, podcast. Zach, thank you very much for coming on the podcast and look forward to catching up with you soon. Thanks, Shaw. You too. Thank you. Sign up for Sports Geek News at sportsgeekhq.com slash sign up now. Thanks again to Zach Monette. Uh, please give him a follow on the Twitter and uh, you can follow and chat with him in the, uh, in the Sports Biz Slack community. If you're not part of the Sports Biz Slack community, you really should be. Uh, simply go to sportsgeekhq.com slash slack to sign up. Um, over 700 and I think 720 uh, we're getting up to now. Uh, sports executives in the uh, sports biz Slack all sharing what they're doing and asking questions and 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 getting some value out of it. Um, absolutely love what's happening in there. One of the things that was interesting in the cover in the interview with Zach uh, was it was the evolution of of team coverage. Uh, you know, Zach is definitely following the trend that we've seen in the professional ranks, moving away from that feast or famine. Uh, do we have the resources there? If we don't, we don't get coverage, and we only do when we have people there. In that, uh, resourcing allows only allows us to have staff on hand at you know at most events, and so that's definitely been a trend in in the professional scene. Um, that as the appetite for um, for content continues to rise. Uh, it provides better consistency from a storytelling ability point of view, and the metrics definitely show that the fans want want that coverage. So it's a bit of chicken or egg, and, and I know a lot of you would have struggled with fighting for those, fighting for more resources. Um, whether that's simply more resources overall, um, but also more resources at away games and and having people on the ground to be able to take some coverage because that's what the fans expect, and. The, 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 the stats all bear out that it works out. It's a, it's a very much, if you build it, they will come. If you produce that content, you will get the views, you will get the, you will get the increased visitors, and from that, the commercialization and the commercial benefits come um, from branding opportunities on content and that kind of thing. So I think it's a really valid case study and it's something that that we do a lot of at uh, at sports geek in in helping digital teams justify new resources to produce more content um because it because it is a case of more content fans love it they consume more there's opportunities that those assets will drive more revenue with commercial partners um and it's, but it's very much a chicken or egg oh we want more resources to do this more content someone has to pay for it the the brave teams, and it is, the brave teams are, are putting those resources in place knowing that those results will come and that that commercial reality will come. So please use use the fact that Zach is adding uh, people, adding press officers to make sure be there in the same way that you can use uh, the growth of teams of previous guests like, uh, you know, talking to Arsenal and how their team has grown to talking to going back back to listening to Peter Stringer about his starting out his team at the Boston Celtics with putting a putting a camera on the shoulder of a uh, of an intern it is very much the if you double down and, uh, on content and the consumption rises then you've got definitely got commercial assets that can be that can bring in revenue and so that's a it's a really it's a really uh, important point um, and then I think the other part of it is is making sure that as a team that you're 
best representing what that value is, even if it doesn't have a sponsor. So then you're starting the internal dialogue with your team that says, hey, we're producing this value um, internally if it gets sold. This is the value that we would present to a sponsor. doesn't matter who that sponsor is. It's just a matter of producing assets that, uh, one, the fans want, um, and then you're providing a conduit for your sponsors to those fans. Uh, so, yes, follow and connect with Zach. Send him a tweet. Tell him you've listened to the podcast. Um, very appreciative of all the all my guests that uh, give up their time for for a for a short chat with me. Uh, last thing before I go, um, if you're in Melbourne, the tickets for the digital business event that we're holding on March two at Docklands at uh, the National Australia Bank uh, building, they are going really well. Uh, so if you haven't, if you're in Melbourne, you haven't got your ticket and you want to learn a little bit about what's happening in the marketing space at an enterprise level in corporate land and what they're using and what they're doing and what you can learn, um, I'd love you to support this event. It's a chunky media event. Um, We've got uh, some great panellists from uh, Optus and Roadshow um, to to discuss what they're doing in in the marketing space and where their mix is, how digital is playing a bigger and bigger part of what they're trying to do. Um, but really the main part of the event is is the networking, connecting people. Um, and so both Steve and myself will be making sure that uh, anyone who does turn up and they want to meet someone um, that is there, we'll, we'll make sure and try to make that uh, connection because we really do believe that uh, uh, there is a bit of a dearth of really good business networking events at that, at that corporate level and that's what we want uh, this event series to be. So if you go to digital businessevents.com.au and you can register for that event. It's a free event. I'm looking forward to uh, getting uh, a lot of people in that room um, and looking forward to it uh, on March 2nd, Thursday night at uh, 6 o'clock. Uh, it will be a, be a good event and uh, you'll, you'll get to learn something and I might even have a few snippets of the event um, on, a future, on a future podcast. Until then, uh, my name is Sean Callanan and you've been listening to the Sports Geek Podcast. Like the Sports Geek Podcast? Find us on facebook.com slash sportsgeek. Check out which teams work with Sports Geek at sportsgeekhq.com slash clients. Please leave a review on iTunes. Go to sportsgeekhq.com slash iTunes. Thanks for listening to the Sports Geek Podcast.